Physiology SAQ2. With regards to ventilation and perfusion of the lung, define shunt, 2 marks. Shunt refers to the actual amount of venous blood bypassing ventilated alveoli and mixing with pulmonary and capillary blood. It is characterized by perfusion without accompanying ventilation. B. Give examples of what contributes to shunt, 5 marks. Sources for shunt includes physiological shunts and pathological shunts. The two types of physiological shunts are anatomical shunts and functional shunts. Anatomical shunts occur when systemic venous blood enters the left ventricle, bypassing the pulmonary vasculature. The conduit for these shunts comprise of the bronchial veins, tibesian veins, anterior cardiac veins, and pleural veins. Anatomical shunts account for approximately 2-5% to of cardiac output in normal subjects. Another type of physiological shunt is functional shunts, or VQ scatter, which refers to lung regions which have a VQ ratio of less than 1. This will have less efficient gas exchange and will return pulmonary venous blood which is incompletely oxygenated. Pathological shunts include intracardiac shunts and intrapulmonary shunts. Intracardiac shunts are direct right-to-left cardiac communications such as patent foramen ovale, patent ductus arteriosus, atrial or ventricular septal defects. Intrapulmonary shunts include abnormal connections between pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins, such as AV malformations. Intrapulmonary shunts are also commonly found in states of dense alveolar filling or collapse, such as atelectasis, pneumonia, ARDS, pneumothorax, alveolar hemorrhage, central airway obstruction, lung tumors, and compressive atelectasis due to abdomen or pleural effusions. The amount of intrapulmonary shunt is variable and is dependent on the balance between hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction and pathological vasodilation of pulmonary vessels by inflammatory mediators. C. Derive the shunt equation, 2 marks. Blood entering the systemic circulation has a component that is shunted past the pulmonary circulation QS, and another component that passes through it, QT minus QS. Consider the blood flow generated in a single beat. The oxygen delivered in this volume of blood is equal to QT times CaO2. This must be made up of shunted blood flow, QS times CVO2, and capillary blood, QT minus QS times CCO2. QT times CaO2 equals QS times CVO2 plus QT minus QS times CCO2. Rearrange the brackets to give QT times CaO2 equals QS times CVO2 plus QT times CCO2 minus QS times CCO2. QS needs to be moved to the left, aiming for QS divided by QT in the final equation. Then simplify the brackets. QS times CCO2 minus CVO2 equals QT times CCO2 minus CaO2. To get QS divided by QT on the left, both sides must be divided by QT. At the same time, the terms CCO2 minus CVO2 can be moved from the left to the right by also dividing both sides by CCO2 minus CVO2. Giving the shunt equation as QS divided by QT equals CCO2 minus CaO2 divided by CCO2 minus CVO2. D. What is the effect on arterial PaO2 of giving oxygen to a patient with a true shunt? One mark. The effect of supplemental oxygen on arterial PaO2 in a patient with a true shunt is minimal. 